uh, right, say, for example. But they're not authoritative in the same breath as the Bible. The Bible is the eternal word of God, and that stands as authoritative. And our knowledge that we have from nature will shift and change, and it can help us to understand things, but it has to work in conjunction with the word of God. Yeah. So those are my th so so I think it for me I think it's a matter of authority who's authority and yeah. and they can work and, and nature and revelation work together nature mm. is a revelation of God in the same but not in the same way but it is a revelation it it can you know <laughs> we can look at DNA and know there's information in DNA which points to God we can um you know we were given uh dominion we were given the the responsibility to um investigate and protect and develop from nature uh at the for uh, 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 during adam and eve god said go out and replenish the earth and be fruitful so we don't we don't have to be anti nature we can utilize nature and we can learn from nature and Psychology, sociology, philosophy—all these areas have their role, and 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 can and I do can do good things and and can help in our in our human experience. But they're not authoritative, is in the same sense as the Bible. The Bible is the what is the ultimate standard that we check our knowledge with. Yeah, I agree with that, Jeff. I don't know what you think, but that's. Uh, I agree. I agree. I do agree. Yeah. And the pr problem is, is like Karl Barth, um, the neo-orthodoxy, when you look at the history of theology, like in the 19th century, for example, like uh, Albrecht Rachel, um, he wrote a book called Justification by Faith. It's a massive work. I've only read a couple of hundred pages of it. But he, um, he says, right, what we've got to do is get back to the Bible. We've got to do, uh, the Protestants are saying they're, they're following the Bible, but they're just, They've just got this inerrancy and it's wooden idea of the Bible and they're not really letting the Bible speak. So we've got to go back to the Bible. So he goes back to the Bible and he says, right, well, God is Father. Um, we've got the kingdom of God is uh, a social kingdom. Now, everyone reading that will think, well, he's, he's really trying to be biblical here, but he's not. If you've learned about Abraham, Re Abraham Rachel, hmm. If you read about him, he was inter he was influenced by uh, Kantian philosophy, and so he was a post-Kantian philosopher before he was a, a theologian uh, in his right. in his thinking. So basically, when he's studying the Bible, he doesn't believe the Bible's the word of God. He was also influenced by socialist ideas. So when he's exegeting like the word kingdom in the Bible, he's using socialist hermeneutic so that's why he concentrates on the fatherhood of God and that mm. the kingdom is about social implications of the gospel and an exam another example is um, Adolf Harnack a German theologian uh, and the liberal theologians do the same they bring in the philosophy and then they deconstruct the Bible and they say the Bible is about the fatherhood of God uh, the bar the, the um, the kingdom is about being social and whatever you but all they've done is allowed philosophy as the ultimate standard and then that waters down biblical teaching and that's where the problem is mm. on the other hand you can get like I have a friend who's a Christian he's a really smart guy he's at university and he's brilliant at philosophy and he uses philosophy he, for him, the Bible is authoritative, but he uses philosophy to help people think through issues because there's a lot of people who have intellectual questions and they can't really understand fully sometimes. And philosophy can be used to just to uh, help people to, uh, you know, like the Trinity. Uh, ask, ask the right questions and stuff. Yeah, uh, it can help you to ask the right questions and to refine your statements and stuff like that but for him the Bible's the authority but yet he, 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 he really uses philosophy to help people to 
in apologetics and things. So. Hello, bro. How you doing, Jude? You alright? I'm faint. Yeah. You alright? He's talking. He's just on the screen, isn't he? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. How's it going out there? Good. You, you, you becoming. Hopefully, you're becoming down to stay sometime in summer. Sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she said. I asked her about it, Jay. Yeah. And she says the last week she's she's got to do some work and stuff. All right, don't worry. We can fit something around, mate. Don't worry. We'll, yeah. If you give me some dates where you'd like to come, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. I mean, we'll be honest. Right, we'll just have the camp bed. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. You'll be able to stay in your own bed because we bring the campers. We'll just sleep in the front room. Oh, don't. You know what I mean? Don't worry, uh, but if you write, if you write me some dates down, if you write me some dates and let me know, I will, I will do. I'll just and then, to and then I'll tonight. have a, I'll have a word and see what, what we can do, yeah. Yeah, but you know, New York, we doesn't have to feel just to go anywhere. I mean, we we'll just sleep on the floor, Jay. You know what I mean? We want to see you as well, really. All right, mate. You know what I mean? Are you sure? Yeah, I, w I want to see you because I've missed her. All right, mate. And I will. You want to see the kids, won't you? It'd be nice for it to see the kids. Yeah. You know me, or Jason lives with. But we've got beds, Jay, to to bring, so it'll be all right. Are you sure? Yeah. All right, mate. Do you want to get back to what you were saying then? What were you saying? Um. The philosophy. Your friend who was a philosopher. Yeah, he's a he's into philosophy. <laughs> he's been trained in analytic philosophy, and uh, he um. He he uses philosophy quite a lot uh, in his apologetics and that, but for him the Bible is the authority. So I think I think the problem is I think John I, I love John MacArthur, but I do think he's a bit unbalanced. I do, but I think there's a lot of evangelicals who go the other way, where they just bring in philosophy, they bring in psychology and all the rest of it, and they just haven't got any biblical truth and they got they're unbalanced. But like I agree with you, you got to keep you, the two can complement each other. You know, we're not anti-intellectual, uh, so we should use philosophy. Uh, we're not anti-knowledge. If there is knowledge to be gained by psychology or so called sociology, we can learn from that. I mean, yeah. it's like it's. I mean, the same thing could be said concerning um, doctors and. Uh, and the knowledge that they have um, in medical m medical uh, sphere, you know, it, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy to to uh, not take that seriously. Um, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's like um, I think you've got to be like, for example, uh, someone with mental illness or someone who comes in a church and say they're taking the tablets and and the pastor says you shouldn't take your tablets you know you don't need them uh, you need to stand on the word of God you know yeah. that's irresponsible well you know even that comment though there Jay what you're really standing on is the pastor's word of God yeah because it's his opinion yeah that's he's what I'm saying you need to stand on the word of God right yeah I mean the question what, what does he mean by that you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. If you, if you, God would tell you through the word of God yourself. Yeah, yeah. You don't need, you don't need to go to an outward source or a, a, a faith healer. Yeah. So I'm saying so dangerous, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's what I when mean. He, when he says you need to stand on the word of God, what he really means is you need to stand on my word <laughs> and throw the tablets away. Yeah, yeah. You're not standing on the word of God, you're standing on the pastor's word. Yeah. It's just nonsense, Jay. I know, I agree. It's dangerous and it's nonsense. There's so many wackos, brother, out there. Yeah, yeah. And charlatans now, it's just crazy. Yeah. This is why, part of my call, I sometimes wonder, Jay, you know, should I be independent and, and you know, pray and, and plant my own kind of church kind of thing, you know, but there's no... The kind of personality I am, because I know what I'm like, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
I could very easily become like some mad cult leader. Yeah. Because I'm that individualised, you know what I mean? And yeah. Not that I'm mad, but it's just the way my personality is. I could carry, get carried away, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I think the accountability thing for me is, is good, you know. It's, um, I know it's got a lot of O's in the Anglican Church, but it's recognised and there's a trust there. Yeah. You know, it's very, it's just like the Nazarenes. I thought, why, why not the Nazarenes? And what i found with the Nazarenes, Jay, yeah. is you, you're spending as, the same amount of time explaining what the Nazarene Church is as you are preaching the gospel to them. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not, it's a, I know it's Sam, I know the great and all that, right? But people are confused about the church of the Nazarene. If you're not educated, what I've found is ministers seem to know about the church, or know about theology, they seem to recognise us. But your average Tom, Dick and Harry down the street, they think it's like Jehovah's Witness or Mormon or, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not well known enough or established enough People don't see it as orthodox, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Although it is, in, it's historically and stuff. So, but I just see it as a barrier. Yeah, yeah. And that's the reason I haven't gone the Nazarene way, to be honest. Because I, I want a church where you don't have to explain them. Because there's an identity there, the Anglican Church. It's the same with the Methodist Church. You know? Yeah. They might be all over the place nowadays, theologically. But when it comes to evangelising, you've already got over ten blocks. Yeah. Because people know it's steeped in the history of, of, of the nation, of Great Britain and stuff, you know what I mean? So so this is why I, I'm, I think I'm for denominations as well. Yeah, yeah. I if just you're an independent church, you you'd end up just... No, there's not. The senior pastor. Yeah, I'll just be back a second, mate. I'll just be one oh. second. I'll just be. I'll just be one minute, mate. Right, yeah.